All right, we're here again looking at mini notebooks and netbooks, and today our special guest is the HP DM1Z, also known as the 3115M in their business and education line. Don't ask me why. They have two models, same machine. I also brought along with me, the uh, ref for reference, a uh, EPC 1011PX, one of our favorite netbooks. Uh, now, you'll notice uh, right off the bat that the DM1Z is quite a bit larger. It is an 11.6-inch device versus the 10.1-inch netbook device, so it is quite a bit larger. If you take a look at the uh, profile here, we've got... Uh, quite a bit uh, more space taken up. Still not too bad. It's a fairly small device compared to a standard laptop, but it is a little bit bigger. Uh, still great size for schools. Now, compared to a standard netbook, this one is a little bit more upscale. It has uh, two gig of RAM rather than the standard one, and, it, uh, and often you can get it upgraded to four or even higher. Uh, also comes with a, a 320 gig hard drive. Um, one of the differences, the key differences in this model is that it uses an AMD Fusion processor instead of an Intel Atom processor. Now, the AMD Fusion processors are obviously made by AMD and they are dual core, but the difference for those is that their built-in graphics is high-powered 3D graphics uh, from the Radeon line, in this particular case a Radeon 6300 series. So we have a very high-powered graphics chip married to a very low-powered uh, processor which gets us great battery life and great graphics performance, which is great. Now the N570 and the 1011PX, which we're using for reference, is running at 1.6 gigahertz, and it is also a dual core. Uh, we're using an AMD Fusion E300 in this one at 1.3 gigahertz dual core. You can get this model with an E450 as well, which is 1.6 gigahertz uh, dual core, but this particular one is E300. But you'll see it doesn't make a huge difference overall. Let's take a look at the ports before we get inside it. We have an SD slot, obviously, which is uh, fairly standard on these devices. Separate headphone and microphone jacks, which is important. I really don't like combined ports. Um, this has uh, two USB 2.0 ports on this side as well as a VGA port. We also have a standard Ethernet jack. On the uh, left side here we have power in. Kensington key lock. We also have an HDMI port which is common on these uh, AMD devices. Great for hooking up directly to a TV or flat screen. And another USB port which is great. You'll also notice the uh, Beats Audio logo on the front of this. This does have Beats Audio and I have to say it is one of the best sounding devices in this size class that I have uh, seen. We won't really get a feel for that on the camera here, but trust me it is really great sounding. Let's take a look at the inside. We'll go ahead and open this bad boy up. And as you can see once again, the screen is quite a bit larger than it is on the EPC. It is a 1366 by 768 screen, so you do have full height versus your typical 1024 by uh, 600 uh, netbook screen over here. If we take a look, you'll notice I have three icons across versus two icons across. That gives you an idea of the uh, width difference. Uh, also, because it is more full size, I do have a full size keyboard, so a lot more comfortable to type on if you're a, a touch typist. Uh, and I do have discrete buttons on the trackpad. This is a huge gain. Uh, the last version of the DM1Z uh, did not. It had a click pad and those are pretty terrible. This one works much better because it does have those discrete buttons. Let's take a look at uh, some 3D apps and we can actually have a get a feel for the uh, difference in graphics performance on these two. I'm going to open up a program called Celestia and Celestia is essentially a 3D simulator for space so imagine Google Earth in space. It's, it's really pretty fun. Uh, we're going to fly to the Sun and then we're going to fly to the Earth. Now, one of the differences here is on this particular model, the DM1Z, because I have a high-end 3D graphics card, I've turned all of the options on and turned the detail all the way up. So you may not be able to see it very well on the video, but I have clouds on this one, and I have lots of detail on this, on this picture of the Earth. And as I scroll across, you'll see scrolling the Earth is very, very smooth. Versus scrolling the marble over here, it's quite a bit more jittery. It doesn't move around quite as fast. It takes a lot more time. Let's take a look at an object in space, just for comparison. I'm going to go to the uh, Hubble telescope on both of these. Okay, so we're flying, as you saw it, flying very, very smoothly on this one. It's a little bit jittery over here. We're still kind of flying to the telescope. We're kind of waiting for it to appear. And there it is. Okay, so let's take a look at the telescope. I can scroll around it again super, super fast here. Very smooth, very comfortable graphics. Very easy and enjoyable to use versus over here on the netbook as I scroll around. I'm dragging, really I am. I'm not just not scrolling around real fast. So that's the big difference between a high-powered 3D graphics card. You can see it just jumps around. Not real great. Okay, so obviously the 3D graphics performance is quite a bit better on the DM1Z versus the 1011. Obviously we've got a, a high-powered 3D graphics card in the DM1 versus no 3D graphics card in the uh, Intel Atom here. But one other thing that you can do with those high-power cards is you can actually offload video processing. So we can pass the uh, processing of the video files and the decompression and all that off to the high-powered graphics processor instead of trying to use the main processor for that. 
and that can make a big difference in the performance. So let's take a look, for example, at one of my favorite little videos. It's a trailer for Mission Impossible, and we'll uh, go ahead and play that in 1080p, which is actually more resolution than these screens are capable of rendering anyway. So there's a lot of scaling, a lot of work actually taking place. And what you'll see is a significant difference in performance on these two. The graphics processor on this one is able to process it very smoothly and very cleanly, you'll notice. And if you look over here at the uh, 1011, which doesn't have a high-powered graphics processor, you'll see there are a lot of spots in here where it starts to look like a slideshow. Again, it's stalling over here, stalling again versus very smooth graphics on the right. So that graphics processor can make a big difference. Uh, obviously, I really like the DM1Z. It is priced a little bit higher than a typical netbook at about $399, although I've seen it at as low as $375. Uh, and for that, you get the full size, the bigger keyboard, the, the better screen, and the high-powered graphics processor. So that may be worth it to you. It's, uh, it's good for students, good for business. It is a netbook class machine as far as battery life goes. I didn't mention that earlier. It will go six, seven hours on a charge, so you get plenty of good battery life life on it as well. Uh, so it is really a great little machine for students in business, so I definitely recommend that you have a look at it.